It might sometimes seem a little bit silly to try and give characteristics that decide whether something is living or not. Often it's really, really obvious. A bird is alive. Rocks are not alive. And you don't need a biology teacher to tell you that. We can go ahead and look at all of the different groups of living things we know of. We've got birds and bacteria and trees and viruses and mammals and insects. And the list goes on and on and on. But actually, you might be surprised to realize that viruses are actually not considered living things because the things that living things do, viruses are not able to do all of those things on their own without help. We assign specific characteristics to living things and all living things do these seven specific characteristics. To remember what they are, we remember the name Mrs. Gren. All living things can move, they can respire, they can sense, they can grow, they can reproduce, they can excrete, and they all need nutrition. Movement, this one's pretty obvious to define. It's an action causing a change of position of place by the organism or part of it. Now, obviously, animals can walk and fly, things like that. People often struggle with the idea of movement in plants, but if you think about it, they can all turn their leaves towards the sun. So that's one example of plant movement, and there are others, there are others as well. The next one is respire, and respiring is the chemical reactions in cells that break down nutrient molecules and release energy. And you might be familiar with the idea of glucose and oxygen being converted to carbon dioxide and water in humans and lots and lots of other organisms as well. This is just one example of a type of respiration. All living things can sense, and that is the ability to detect stimuli in the internal or external environment and make responses. So obvious ones, seeing with eyes and being able to smell and hear, that kind of thing. But another one in plants would be leaves knowing which direction the light is in or knowing which direct direction gravity is in, so being able to move towards it, grow in the right direction or away from it. All living things can grow, and this is the permanent increase in size or dry mass by increasing cell number and or cell size. And this definition distinguishes it from, for example, putting weight on, which is a a kind of growing, but not in the sense of the characteristics of living organisms. All living things can reproduce, and this is making more of the same kind of an organism. So, for example, bacteria cells will divide to produce more of them. Humans have babies. Flower and plants produce seeds, etc. All living things can excrete, and this is the removal from an organism of waste products of metabolism, toxic materials, and materials in excess of requirements. An example would be breathing out carbon dioxide or the urea in urine that is released. And lastly, all living things need nutrition, and this is taking in of materials for energy, growth, and development. Plants require light, water, carbon dioxide, and ions, and animals need organic compounds and ions, and most of them also need water. <laughs>